Hey besties, it is Becky here with Bestie Becky's Crafts and I think it's been forever since I've done a video. It has been a crazy busy month with kids coming out from college, graduating college, and family visiting, and kids moving, and all kinds of stuff. So, I've finally been able to get in my craft room, I think it's been three weeks and it's been nice to be back in here and crafting and I've been working on kind of a big project and it's involving flowers and I love to make paper flowers. I hate die cutting a bunch of them out and wish that someone would do that for me but I love to put them together and make them. So, this project required me to make about five different flowers. I want to make sure I have enough to fill the vase that I'm going to make. And I always go by the, uh, you know, opposites, or not opposites, um, odd number. So, that's why I chose five flowers. And I made extra flowers, just in case, because you never know. And I'm thinking I'll probably need like at least three of each of the flowers for the project, but I always like to make more. And then if I have more, I can do Happy Meal with my flowers. So, the first flower we're going to work on is this flower I have right here. And this is my take on a wild rose. Now, I did a little research looking on the internet and just from my own experience and a wild rose isn't as full as a regular rose it doesn't have as many layers of petals and it has a yellow center so this is kind of my take on it and the petals aren't really smooth I was thinking of it kind of opening and so that's why I did the wrinkled petals and the uh, flower uh, flower bush, I don't know, flower plant, rose rose bush I was thinking of happens to be on my grandparents farm that um, the flower a plant there is a hundred years old plus and it blooms every year and it's huge and it's gorgeous but this is color right here so that's what I went by so let's go ahead and get started and make our first wild rose they're really easy and actually they're a lot of fun so what you need are I went with that odd number three let's zoom out a little bit here so we don't miss anything so I started out with my three groups of petals and I just used my five petal bunch from EK success and so you can pick whichever size you want if you wanted to go smaller flowers or whatever this happens to be the largest one I think so you need three of those and then I like Spellbinders uh, Dye Delight dies I use them a lot for my flowers they're kind of a pain in die cutting because you have to like die cut out all these petals and sometimes they'll only give you one petal and the flower will need like five or six so it can be a lot of die cutting but out of this all I used were the leaves so here's my little leaves so again that odd number three leaves so I use that from from that set and then for the center I use the peony from Spellbinders Dye Delights the center for my rose and I cut out two centers I wanted my center full so there I cut out two centers out of yellow so that's all I cut out that's what I needed so let's see what we need to do to these petals to get going so let's kind of put this stuff off to the side so that's what we need for our paper and you're going to need a paper towel and I've been making flowers with mine so mine is stained with this beautiful pink color and 
you're going to need a spray bottle with water in it. Um, this is just, it happens to be a Tim Holtz one, but you can use any spray bottle you want. And you are going to really get that paper wet. This is really thick cardstock. It's Recollections cardstock, I think, from Michaels, but it's pretty thick. So you want to get it pretty saturated just to really break up those fibers and make it easier for us to do some folding. So I'm just going to kind of tap off the excess. I remove this here out of the way. And the paper is pretty pliable now, but it'll actually it'll dry pretty fast. And all you're going to do is let me zoom in is you're going to just kind of like accordion fold your petal and squish it up and it looks terrible and you think oh I'm going to rip the paper but you're really not because you have it saturated and you've broken up those fibers there in that paper and so you're going to do this to all five of the petals on each of those three sections that you cut out. Okay. And that really doesn't take long to do. Okay. So usually by the time you get done with squishing up one and then the second one and the third one, they the first one's dry. And then what I do is I take my mouse pad, my lovely, lovely mouse pad, and I'm just taking a embossing tool that has a, a big ball on the end of it. I think it's from Spellbinders, yeah. And I'm just going to push in the center, and then, oops, I forgot to push, put a uh, yeah, phone on silent. And you're going to go around each petal and in the center and just it's just making it kind of ugly yeah it's just kind of looking kind of ugly so you're gonna do this to all three of those and I've done some ahead of time so that saves you some time and this way the video is not terribly long so let me go back out a little bit here and the next thing you're gonna do is this one is is pretty much dry, it's one I did a little earlier, is you're going to just kind of unfold it just a, a smidge and you're going to stick your thumb down near towards the top, I think you can see that, and then you're just going to fold it over and kind of like make a petal shape, you're going to kind of cup it, and then you're just going to do that all the way around. Alright, doesn't have to be pretty. Remember, we're thinking of like a flower that's opening up. Almost like butterfly wings, you know, when a, but a butterfly first hatches. So you can do this all the way around. You can open them up as much as you want. As little as you want. Like so. I have one more to do here. Alright. This one I want to open up a little bit more. Okay, so there's that one. Here's one I did a little earlier. And he's all dry. So there's that one. So this is the one that we just did. And it's still a little damp, but it'll be alright. We'll make it work. So, again, same thing. Just kind of cupping it around the end of your, your thumb. If you have fingernails, it still works. You can still do this. I like completely chop mine off because they were getting in my way and so stained. Oh, from using distress inks. Oof. So terrible. Okay, so then, then there's my last one. Alright, so there's our three petals. So now let's put our petals together. And I'm going to use, this is just a smaller embossing tool and that's just to help push down on my flowers because I don't want to burn myself to death here. Even though I've 
burnt my fingers like crazy here so I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave the most scrunched up one as my center so this is the one that we kind of just did and then he's not scrunched up so much and then there's this one scrunched up a little bit more and I'm just gonna put a drop of glue on the back and you can see that and I'm just going to use my hot glue gun because we've talked about this before and if you watch my videos I'm impatient so I like for things to come together quick stay together I'm also going to get my mouse pad here too squish them down and let's put our final petal in the center here too far. There. Okay. Now we're going to put our final petal in the center. A little bit of glue. And you're going to offset your, your petals. I forgot to tell you that. You don't want all your petals lining up because flowers do not look like that in nature. So you're just going to line your petals up in between that last petal before it. Alright, so there's the base of our wild rose. Not fun. Alright, so we'll set this off to the side and now let's work on our center. So here's our center pieces and I don't know if you can tell by the center pieces that um, there's a straight edge and then there's a top edge where it's cut and you'll see where that comes into play in just a minute but I'm going to go to where the back side is which you can kind of tell on how it's been cut I'm going to take a pair of tweezers and I'm going to put that at the end and then I'm just going to wrap it around now if you had a quilling tool this would be perfect and I have one and I found it the other day and I was so excited because it's like I'm going to be making flowers. This will come in handy. And now I don't know where I put it. So as soon as I'm done with this project, they'll show up. Which is always how it works. Okay. So I'm to the end and I'm just going to go ahead and roll it to the end. Roll it over so it gets a kind of a little crease in it. And then I'm going to take my hot glue, put a tiny little drop there and wrap it around and then just before it kind of sets up it gets cooled off I push it down so it looks pretty smooth I don't know if you can see that or not and then what I'm going to do is take my second piece here and I'm going to put a dab of glue on the end of that and then line it up with right where I left off. That way it stays smooth when I wrap it around and there's not like a bump where it overlaps too much. And just kind of hold it there for a second and then I just continue wrapping it around and I'm just lining up the bottom as I wrap it around real exciting right and then do the same thing add some hot glue just a tiny little drop oh my hot glue gun is a mess oh. Alright, and then we're going to do the same thing, push it closed, and just before it cools off while it's still warm and pliable, kind of push it down so it's flat, and kind of finish it off. So there's our little center, and that's what it looks like from the side. And now, we're going to kind of hold it in between our fingers because we don't want that center portion to push through because it's not rolled really tight so that center part can push through and then you'll have a mess 
So you're going to hold the center and then you're just going to take your thumb. I'm not even using my finger now. I'm just using my thumb because I have no finger now. Um, and I'm going to spread that open just like that. Do you see? And then I'm going to go ahead and do that all the way around. And you know, don't be afraid that you're going to tear it because I haven't tore one yet. Knock on wood. Okay, so I can take quite a bit here. All right, so there's our center. And I want to make sure that I don't have a hole in the center from where my um, tweezers were. So I just kind of make sure that that is covered up. Ooh, it is stuck to my hand with hot glue, a little string there. And then here's our leaves. So the next thing that we do is we're going to do some distress ink because I think that gives the flower kind of some dimension, some depth, and just kind of adds to it. So let's do the leaves first. And I just picked a color that went with the color of paper I had. And this just happens to be a mowed lawn. Um, there might be a color that works best for you. Or if you just want them to be like antiqued, you can do that just like with a brown or something like vintage photo or something like that. But I want these to look kind of realistic. So that's why I stayed in the same color family as the paper that I'm using. So I'm going to do my leaves. And I'm just doing the edges. Okay. So there's the mode lawn. And I'm going to... I store my sponges that go with that color underneath. So there's that one. And then for the center, I want to use mustard seed. And I don't want to get any green on there. I'm just using mustard seed. I'm just going to kind of dab at that center. And it's just it's just a smidge darker of a color, but I think it just adds it just adds that little something. Alright. And again. Put that back in. And then for my rose part, I'm using picked raspberry. And for this, I'm just kind of going usually you go you know so it's on the front but I'm just kind of getting the tips of the flower petals so I'm just kind of going with the way that they're folded I didn't do this earlier while they were wet because I didn't want the distressed ink to run I just want an effect on the petals, you know, just to kind of, like I said, give them some depth. All right, so there's that. And now let's finish putting it together. So our leaves, I'm just going to take around a pencil and curl them a little bit and do that on all three leaves. Here. And I'm going to glue one small leaf to one of the big leaves. So just a little bit of glue. Doesn't matter which side I put the leaf on. And then again, that was kind of warm. Ooh. Okay, 
Okay, so there's those. I feel like we were so far away. All right, let's glue the center. So I'm going to put some glue on the bottom. And put it in the center of my flower, like so. Okay. And then now we just need to glue our leaves on. So I just kind of find a place that I think might have a little bit too much of a gap in between the petals and, you know, maybe put a leaf there. And then I'll go across to the other side and kind of decide where I want to put my other leaf. I think I'm going to put it right there. And kind of push it all up together. And there we go. All of my little spider webs from my hot glue, and there we go. We've got four pretty flowers. Aren't they pretty? I think they're gorgeous. And they're so fun. They're so easy, so quick. And uh, like I said, I call them a wild rose, but you can call them whatever you want. So, there we go. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it wasn't too long. Hoping to make it short. And um, I wonder what flower I'll do next. So, so thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed today's video and happy crafting and I hope you make some wild roses yourself and uh, see you later. Bye.